Greetings. How are you? I'm listening. Great to meet you. Ah, I've, I've been, been expecting, expecting you. For the good. You oh, come oh, get the voodoo. Uh, hey there. And you are. Light be with hey, you. Great to you me. come to consult the spirits? Welcome to Orgrimmar. Have you come to serve the Horde? Sail here, me buy, and trade. What? Hello and welcome to Control Alt Wow, the podcast for those of us who love World of Warcraft and love making many alts. Today is Sunday, March 8th. 2020, and this is episode 653, entitled, Ain't No Business Like Show Business. I'm Aprilian, your host, and with me are my two awesome co-hosts. Hello, Constructs. How are you today? I'm uh, recovering from my vacation. It was a pretty good wowcation, but uh, I I think I have to go back to work to rest. (laughs) So you can get some sleep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there you go. I can focus on my task at hand. Yeah. And Grand Negus, how are you today? I'm good. I'm I'm really good. I had to remind myself like five times that uh, this is the first of four shows where I have to be, be uh, one hour early because right. you guys had had your... Switch over to to uh, daylight saving. Daylight savings without telling me. Right. So yeah. Saving no s. <laughs> I yeah. don't know why. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I put in I put in the tweet this morning. Uh, meet in four point four eight hours, hours, and I thought right. maybe that'll be like a subtle hint. That we change the yeah, clock. Yeah, we change and, time. We change the clock. A brilliant was on the ball. She goes affirmative, you know, like Roger. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have this wonderful. And no response from Grand Nagus. I'm like, what Uh-oh. happened? Uh-oh. What happened? What's going on in Germany? Uh-oh. <laughs> Nothing. That's know. it. I have this um, clock that automatically resets itself by um, um, radio frequencies, which is kind of yeah, neat. It's of an those. analog clock. So it's kind of neat. Yeah, but yeah. it still doesn't remind you of the other zones that don't. Don't, right, right. And my, oh. um, of course, every, ooh, why does uh, Hammond have all these guards with him now? I never noticed that before. You know how you can go and salute the guy, General Hammond? In Stormwind, I always like to do that because he salutes you back. But now he's got like a whole bunch of guards. Ooh. General Hammond, he's the guard. Who's the, he? He's on a horse in Stormwind when you first. Oh, took, that guy! Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. But now he has uh, like a whole bunch of guys around him. Hmm. Maybe this is something from BFA. So yeah. Anyways, I'm doing well. I took my dog to um get her rabies shots and it was so refreshing because um if you do it before the year is up then it counts for three years so her rabies shots now expires in 2023 and i just like saying that because i'll be retired in 2022 (laughs) so i don't have to take her again until after i'm retired (laughs) <laughs> I just, I just love that whole idea. I, I can't wait. I just, I have every, every um, morning when I, every day when I go into work, I go, Siri, how many days until May thirty first, twenty twenty two? Oh, nice. It's eight hundred fourteen days until then. <laughs> there you go. You know what I thought about uh, Saturday when I was streaming? Hmm. I was streaming, I was playing music from the 80s, and I thought to myself, wow, the 80s ended 30 years ago. Isn't I'm it? old. <laughs> yeah. Um, son? The 80s ended 30 years ago. No, that's son. When the 90s, no, that's no, when the 90s began. 
No, son. The 80s ended 40 years ago. <laughs> oh. Yes. The 80s started 40 years ago. But no, the 80s started 50 years. 20, oh, yeah, 40 years ago. Okay, you're right. Come yeah. on, Aprilian. It's but, not, yeah, it's been not, a long time. Hard. Well, I graduated in 1980, so, yeah, that was my year. Queen. I graduated in 1990. Mm. I, feel, I feel for you. Randy, guess when did you graduate? High school. Um, 80. Two eighty three. Oh, so, yeah. 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 What was your favorite? What was your your grad song? My what? Your 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 prom. Well, our song for prom. We don't have we don't have proms here. Our prom our prom was Stairway to Heaven. (laughs) Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That that was the big one. (laughs) No, we didn't want to play it at our school because it was a Catholic school, and they thought it was a devilish song. So. Yeah, no, we, we don't. <laughs> we don't have prom. Stairway. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's going on this week? We just ended um, uh, Dark Moon Fair. Oh yeah, we just ended Dark Moon Fair. That's right, and we are coming out of the Battle for Azeroth dungeon event. Uh. We got, and then we got a pet battle event coming up this week. So yeah, for and, all you yeah, pet we're battlers, fin- we're finishing up on the Terran Mill versus South Shore. Mm-hmm. That's always. And fun. then we, yeah, we start on on the pet battle event. Starts on Tuesday, mm-hmm. and then on Wednesday, uh, one of the few instances where we have something to report from the WoW, ser- uh, the WoW Classic service, oh. which in this case is the unlocking of the Arathi Basin Ooh, Battleground. That's, that's big. Yeah, that happens on <clears throat> Wednesday. Mm. Not sure. I would think that they are doing a worldwide same-time unlock, and that's why there's only one, um, one date. Mm. Because it's the same as the as the launch, where it depends upon where you are in the world, at what time it's for you. But it's like one one time, and mm. and it, and it unlocks for everyone at the same time, right? Just not at the same hour. If that makes sense, yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then there's something that I would like to talk about uh, before we go into our weeks, and that is the fact that although you could technically do it, and I did it a couple of weeks ago already, now it's official as per WoW or or a Battle.net launcher, Mm. where you now see that you can uh, that there is the the ad for the pre-order of the pre-Shadowlands novel mm. called Shadows Rising by Madeline Rowe I think that's how you pronounce her name which is going to be available uh, it looks like it's going to be on July 14th so not too, not too much longer, about, was it four months? Yeah. yeah. And uh, if uh, I don't have the, the specific date at the moment, but uh, that could be an indication as to when the expansion is scheduled or when they're aiming it we add it for Scheduled. launch uh, before the storm uh, release date. Let's mm. see when that was. Uh, we don't. Huh? Oh, it's it's another book. Oh. Uh, there are apparently more. More books that's called Before the Storm. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, wow, exactly. Let's see. Uh, 
Christy Golden. There. June 12th. Mm. 2018. Mm. So, and then we got the expansion some, when was it? September? August, September, something like that. So, if we go one, one month past that, which it almost is by the day because it's the 12th, 12th versus the 14th, we might maybe get the expansion a month later than we got uh, Battle for Azeroth. But again, that's just uh, a thing that might happen and something that you guess your way to because it's all guesswork at this, point, at this moment, at least for us. Right. So, but I just wanted to remind everyone that that's what you can do now if you so choose. As I said, I've I've uh, pre-ordered mine my copy as soon as I saw the the uh, ad or the um, the article about the fact that it existed, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I would. I was able to to pre-order it again, as I said, a couple of weeks ago already. So yeah, Shadows Rising, the newest pre-expansion novel by Madeline Rowe. And as far as I know, we already have two excerpts. Um, there are a couple of YouTubers that talked about each one I uh, watch videos that analyze both of them, uh, both the excerpts, and I'm quite uh, interested in seeing where where that book takes us and how into how much detail they're going to go with regards to the time between now meaning the time after we took care of uh, Nizoth mm-hmm. and then the, the pre-patch events that happen that are going to happen in Shadowlands, which we obviously don't know yet what they're going to be. But, yeah, so let's see what that what that first um glimpse into the post uh, BFA stuff is going to be. Because I'm definitely going to to read it on day one as soon as I have it. I'm going to like turn off everything and get a huge thermos with, with, with tea in it and then I'm going to Sit down and then and read that book. Excellent. You're going to be what? immune immune to interrupting of the cats, right? <clears throat> Just like the shield the shield around the boss when yeah. you can't interrupt or CC him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not I'm not, I'm not interruptible <laughs> uh, in that period of time. Nothing, not going to work. Turning off everything like mobile phones, phones, everything. Turning off everything and then. Yeah, sitting down, lying down, I don't know, yet, and, and read it, so, yeah. All right. All right. Um, and I don't know if we wanted to talk about this, but every time I hear about the coronavirus, I think about the, what was that, Hakath blood um, disease. The that, zombie plague in wild. Yes, and actually, it's interesting because that's what got me interested in playing WoW. At the time, I was playing Second Life, and I was listening to... Um, I was watching Screensavers. Do you remember Screensavers? Mm-hmm. Leo Laporte? And they were playing WoW, and they reported the whole thing about how somebody had a hunter... Somebody was playing in, um, in some dungeon in WoW, 
and there was a disease that if you stood near your your um part your your teammates in the dungeon you could spread the disease so the whole idea was just to make sure you spread out properly and somebody's pet got the disease and they put the pet away and they mm-hmm. brought down the boss and then they went back into Ogremar or wherever Stormwind or whatever and they brought out their pet and the pet had the disease was still affected yeah was still affected still had the 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 um what do you call it uh what's the thing over the anyway still had the affection and mm-hmm. it started spreading and I swear that's what I think of every time I hear about the coronavirus that how yep. sh- 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 and there's a few videos if you search it on YouTube there's a few videos that shows how it just went crazy and it actually mm-hmm. became a simulator for some scientific use of yep. how diseases can spread so um, yep. it just it makes me nostalgic because I, I I don't I don't know maybe I would have eventually found wow but that whole thing made me interested in it and and then I, I started playing <laughs> yeah it was it was so corrupt yeah so corrupt yes exactly yep. Yep. <laughs> Now, were you playing back then? No. Yeah. Oh, you were. Okay. All right. Did you get infected? I didn't. It was funny because I read some things about it. Like, um, there were quarantine places where people would get together and and to say to stay safe. <laughs> you know, kind of like what we're doing now. So it's it's interesting. To see yeah. um, what happened in World of Warcraft uh, we're playing in real life. All right. So what else do and we then, have? Yeah, and then you see the politicians nowadays where they're just almost making fun of the people that, that, that believe in science. Right. Exactly. It's kind is, of sad. Which is, which is so sad. Yes. In Germany now, there are... Seriously debating, which is way too, uh, way too little, in my opinion, whether every gathering, every event with a crowd larger than a thousand people should be canceled by default. Mm. Well, they did cancel South by Southwest. Yeah, but that's that's still if you if you um, if you think about it, a thousand people are. An arbitrary number. Yes. Because it could be two people getting together. Right. But still. Exactly. But still, yeah, but still, if you think about it, how many events, how many gatherings, what type of gatherings have a, a thousand or more people? It's a big convention hall or a big concert hall or a, a sports gathering, a sports event. Almost all sports events have have more than a crowd larger than a thousand people. Right, exactly. So, again, there are, and then you have, uh, yeah, you have so many things that that uh, that uh, the the community communities have to go without. Like in 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 where is it in Spain? Mm. They uh, no no not in Spain sorry in in Switzerland they postponed the the soccer season the football season there's there's just no more football being played mm. in Switzerland in, it's like yeah so it's interesting to see how different the priorities of people are of governments are right. of of individuals responsible not only in power but responsible because people responsible for something doesn't mean that they are necessarily in power or vice versa right exactly well so, good luck to everybody um, definitely yeah. yeah I mean I mean, I feel like saying wash your hands don't touch your face you can touch yeah. your friend's face but don't touch your <laughs> no, I'm kidding so, I'm kidding and and the thing is, listening to us 
on your de device of choice right. is is safe. Right. So, so there is no no chance other than you getting infected by the device itself. But and that hasn't but, happened yet. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. But yeah. listening to us is absolutely safe. And I've been playing on my VR, which is a great way to, <laughs> to uh, you know, play with others without interacting with others. <laughs> mm -hmm. Physically interacting. Physically, yeah, right. Yeah. All right, well, let's get started. Yes. I've had a fantastic weekend, wow. It's Thank um, God. very comforting. <laughs> those battlegrounds where you're not necessarily putting out more damage, but you feel like you're contributing more by pushing all the buttons all at once. <laughs> bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Constructs, how's your weekend wow been? My weekend wow has been uh, uber busy. I, huh? uh, uber. I, uh, yes. Pulling a Vrishna there and uh, going and doing uber and uber stuff. With some friends and I uh, logged in to Pagel. Oh, and nice. I logged in on my Druid. And, so uh, that's that's classic WoW. Yeah, and I logged in on my guild, and uh, there was no one there, so Aww. I G quit. You G quit. I G quit. quit. Mm -hmm. I G quit. Control out WoW guild, <gasps> and, uh, the Alliance side, and then I joined a friend's guild, which is the uh, Lion Pride Tavern guild. They do a podcast, and they speak about, during the podcast, they have a one-minute segment about gold making. So oh. I want to make an effort to learn about gold making in Classic so that I can speak to the um, the masses, as it were. You know, because I, I really, uh, after about a week or two of hard playing in Classic, I'd made zero progress. I was still dead broke. Mm. And I was highly, highly frustrated with that game. I bet. I uh, I uh, logged in, and uh, there was somebody playing as Classic, mm. who was a, go go a gold goblin, Mac from the Goblin Goldcast. And uh, he, he and his wife took the time to explain a few things to me so that I didn't feel like a chomp. So, <laughs> so I uh, progressively got a little bit better, and he sent me some gear. Mm. So I was able to uh, protect myself because you can actually take substantially less damage if you have a little bit of armor. So they sent me armor kits, which reduce mm -hmm. your damage taken, your physical damage taken by 25%. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to heal as much. So you're a little bit quicker on the pull. And then uh, Max says, well, I'll come to Iron Forge. I'm like, that's a long walk, man. I said, you don't have to. He goes, no, no, I'll come to Iron Forge. And he came just to give me conjured water and conjured food. Oh, and that's you nice. have you have no idea how valuable that stuff is in classic. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it doesn't seem like much, but you don't have to pay for it. It doesn't cost nothing. The mage conjures it. He hands you three stacks. It doesn't he stacks to twenty, doesn't take a lot of room in your bags, and you're topped up on food and mana. In three seconds. So it's insanely handy to have a, free, a mage friend in Classic. Because you don't have to go spend your gold on food. So I, I was like immensely grateful to him. Because I was able to play for several hours. Without having to travel to town every five minutes. To uh, buy food or get repairs or whatnot. The gear I got... I decided to, um, I slowly, slowly, slowly decided to um, multi-box. So I brought in an alt, and the alt is a different class and different armor type. So I was able to trade my gear around to the alt. And then I brought in another alt, and then the other alt is a skinner and a leather worker. So I was able to craft gear for my both of my characters that were in there. So that was like insanely handy. And then I finally had enough gold. You're going to laugh at me, but I have finally had enough gold to train for blacksmith level one. So I was able to craft gear for my paladin. 
Your brother is still muted. <laughs> Sorry. Over. I felt so, so much better than the first couple of stupid hours that I couldn't do anything. I mean, when you're when you're stuck below the one silver mark, you're basically selling off pieces of your gear so you can buy your spells. Right. It's not a good, it's not a good feeling. Mm. No. And. Um, you know, I decided, you know, I'm not going to run away from the starting zone. I'm going to finish the starting zone because there's actually, if you do all the quests in the starting go- zone, mm-hmm. you can buy all your spells and have enough gold left over, or not gold, but silver and copper left over to learn a profession, a gathering profession. So if you finish the entire starting zone area, like Cold Ridge, Cold uh, Valley Ridge, you have you have what it takes in there to move on to the big open world, and I didn't want to do the humanoid starting area, the the human starting area because I've done that area to death. So I thought I'll do the gnomes and the dwarves because I don't mind. I mean a gnome rogue and um, Okahandras. She's very very uh, good because one backstab brings down almost everything. One hit from a backstab. It's insane. Like, I found a dagger. It has spell power on it. I don't care. It does six damage per second. One hit from that, and anything almost goes down, even two levels higher. So it's like, huh, okay. That's not too bad. So, like, I'm uh, I'm able to not be healing all the time. I'm not able, I'm able not to eat all the time. Thanks to Key Clone, I have my three monitors. I right. took a picture on Twitter. I have my three monitors going at the same time, and I can revolve from party to party to party. I have my macros set up so that I can do um, <laughs> slash follow or slash assist and one hit, one cast. If it's a range, you can do a range cast. If it's a healing, I can heal a party member. It's very, very handy. My paladin got a super awesome shield. I don't know where I picked it up. It just it was a white. It fell off one of the mobs and it's like better than the crafted shield. So I'm like, oh, okay, so I'll hang on to this one. And then I got a scimitar. A finely uh, honed scimitar, which does three times the amount of damage as your starting weapon. Mm. And I finally got a long sword after that to equip, which is it's it's called a feeble sword <laughs> better than what I had before so you know I'm making slow slow but steady progress and multi-boxing I'm repeating the same quest so I can earn a little bit of gold to learn my spells and to learn my uh, next uh, training for the profession so I can craft some more gear for my alts and it's not it's not going very fast, but uh, mm-hmm. I put in two add-ons in the add-on section for Grand Magus that the, the uh, guild member recommended to me from the Lion's Pride Tavern. Maybe you can look at it and uh, speak to some detail. Because installing add-ons in Classic is different. You have to click on Get More Add-ons, and you have to target specifically Classic. And the add-on versions are 1.1, if there is an add-on for that. One so point, I installed 13 Tom point. Tom. Yeah, hmm. I installed TomTom and I installed Identity 2. Because the other guy, when he's talking to me, it would always bring up his name in front of his character. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty handy. Because when mm-hmm. you switch to your different alts, it always reminds the person who's, who's talking to them. So I was like yep. really, really impressed with that. And I said, what's that add-on called? And he said, Identity 2. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you have to install it on the classic for it to work on the classic. Mm-hmm. So I went and got it. I got it on Twitch. It took like 30 seconds to install, and it worked right away. It's a beautiful yeah. little piece of software, and it uh, it tells people when you switch from alt to alt to alt who's talking to them. So that's really, yeah. really... Um, it, you can have you can choose to have it in say raid chat or guild chat. I only pick it in guild chat because that's the only one that's relevant to the people I talk to. Mm-hmm. Most yep. people in Pago won't know who I am anyway. <laughs> I'm just a minor character in a big in a big sea of uh, fish, and um, 
unfortunately for me, uh, Miss Constrax is giving me lots of wife aggro this week because she's in a lot of pain. She is in a lot of pain. And I, I don't say that in a little way. Um, the suffering that she's going through right now is not pleasant. It's, it's very painful for me to um, to deal with that because I it stresses me out. You know, like I don't like to see anybody suffer, and when one of your loved ones is suffering, it right. uh, it the intensity hits you harder. So I'm, you know, I'm very sorry to see her suffer, and I try to be as helpful as I can. She's very lucky to have you. The, way, the term "wife aggro," but it's not derogatory in this term. In this uh, sentence, it's just something that has to happen real life first, people. Right. When, if, when you have uh, people in your life that it's not going well for them. Mm-hmm. You have to put the game aside for uh, the time being to deal with that. Um, this week, I managed to get with my nephew, and I played some Fortnite. Oh. And my nephew is pretty damn good at Fortnite. He finishes number one on the number of uh, competitions that we went in out of oh, 100. how cool. And uh, to finish number one, I, I, you, ha- you don't have to be just sneaky. You have to be able to think outside the box, outwit your opponent. And run away when it's time to run away. So I watched how he was playing. And when he would face somebody, he would always try to divert their attention a little bit and come up behind him. So I watched a streamer on uh, one of the evenings. She was playing Fortnite. And she's new to the game. I said, how are you, how are you winning? And she's playing with somebody who has a lot of experience, who knows the game well, who's played all the previous incarnations, right. who's played all the expansions, who knows every inch of that map. So he explained a few things while he was playing. He goes, I have the best gun in the game. Okay, right there. You have the best gun in the game. There's nothing that's going to talk to you other than the rocket launcher or well placed grenade. Mm. So, you know, he would explain how to survive and you know sometimes you don't take the enemy head on sometimes you jump away from them you go ahead of them and you shoot them as they don't expect you to be in the opposite direction so I took some of these um, clever clever tactics and I applied that to my mech warrior game because I was coming up to an impasse in mech warrior I was trying to finish the map quickly Mm. and I would run into nine or ten enemies and they would I would finish the mission, but there'd be so much damage to my mech that um, basically the career of that faction that I was playing was over because you couldn't get past the um, the intro scenario. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? I'm good at this game. I'm good at Mech Warrior. I have good aim. I have a big monitor. I should be, I should be winning this easily. So I tried to apply some of these Fortnite tactics. I thought, what if, what if they rewrote the game with the strategy in mind of these new first-person shooters instead of a simulation strategy? And that's what happens is they placed elements in the game that make things random where you're not able to one-shot the person you're coming up against. So you have to outwit and outsmart and outstrategize them. So what I did is once I finished three quarters of the scenario, I ran away. So to be specific is I bravely ran away in the opposite direction of the fighting as far away as I could, leaving all my teammates behind. (laughs) And then when I was at the far end of the map, the opponents came at me one by one. You know how easy it is to pick off somebody who's less armored than you do and who's moving slowly in a straight line towards you? Mm. It's super easy if you're a sharpshooter. I used to be a sharpshooter when I was young, but as I get older, my eyes aren't so good, and I really do need that 31-inch monitor. That 17-inch monitor doesn't cut it anymore. So 31-inch monitor, Mm. I finished the game with zero damage other than my armor. So that was like... Oh, I did good. And then the message came up. You've unlocked multiplayer. <laughs> okay. It's not, this is not your grandpa's game. This is like the new fancy shoot, run away, shoot, run away, shoot, run away. 
that they put in all the games, the first-person shooters now. Um, Overwatch is like that. You can't take anybody head-on anymore. Mm. You have to shoot, run away, shoot, run away, shoot, run away. And, and uh, unless you have, like, the biggest rocket launcher in the game, you can't one-shot anybody because everybody has shields, everybody has health, everybody can be healed. It's all about the strategy, not the first-person strategy, the... Um, kind of the StarCraft mentality where if the unit has one life left, you can run away to rebuild and come back at full health to one-shot you at the end. So I'm like, okay, so like I'm, I'm, I'm learning the strategy bits from Fortnite and trying to apply it to other games. And it's working pretty good. So I thought, mm. what if I apply that to StarCraft Classic? <laughs> what if I went in there with a character which their only job is to pull the mob. They're not there to kill it. They're just there to hold threat for a few seconds. Mm. And then what if I have my lightly armored character, which does a lot of damage, just come up behind and one-shot it? So that's kind of what I did. Is I, uh, I figured out that because I can't craft the magical enchanted gear that does so much damage, I'm not able to do like those superstar... Uh, heroes that pull the whole room and then one shot everything. I have to be the more um, pragmatic, uh, slow uh, uh, action Rambo fighter, which takes on the 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 guys one at a time and beats them up for, for you know five minutes per fight to uh, come out on top at the end. So that's what I'm doing, and I'm uh, I'm playing my rogue on the EU. And uh, my rogues level from level 21 to level 41 this week because I had the oh, nice. buff. As I was playing, I was doing pet battles because I wanted a blue, not a gray, not a white, not a green, a blue cat. If it's not blue, it's poo. Exactly. I want a blue cat from around the crazy cat lady in the Elwyn Forest. She sells four cats. So what I've been doing is I've been going to buy her cat carriers and selling those on the auction house. Oh, so you buy the cat carriers for 38 copper and, or a few silver, and then you sell them for 50 gold mm. because I got no gold on the EU. So I'm currently at 750 gold from mm. having been down all the way to 50 gold. So slowly really building it. Um, I talked to somebody about, you know, copper is really hard to farm. Oh, and really? He sort of laughed at me. He goes, why are you farming copper? Why don't you just jump to BFA and go farm Xantil, uh flowers and Najatar, and then you can make 50K in a week. Mm. And I'm, I'm trying to say to the guy, I'm like, look, I'm super casual. I just don't have time to go to Najatar. Right. I don't have time to get flying. I don't have time to do anything like that. I want to level this rogue so I can do mining and stuff. I resent. And I'm not, I'm not using that word lightly. I resent the fact that in Cataclysm, in Legion, and in DFA, the only two classes you can play are Thorn Druid and Night Elf Druid. Herbalist. If you want to be a multi, multi, multi million gold millionaire and, or do transmog. I, did, I do not do transmog. That's not my thing. I do not do herbalism. That's not my thing. I do mm. other things. I, I like crafting stuff. I don't like just selling mats. I understand everyone has a different approach. Right. And that's their that's their right. That That is their right. I just don't do raiding. I understand, mm. you know, you make a flask for a thousand gold and you consume that and that's going to last an hour. But in order to have that thousand gold, you have to have the 30 to 50,000 gold a week coming in. Um, since uh, the rework at the auction house, I make between five and two hundred fifty gold a day. Mm, I used to make thirty to fifty. No, I used to make thirty to three hundred thousand gold a week. I don't make that anymore. The rules have changed. Right. So, like, oh well, you know, you're just a casual. Yes, I am a casual. That's, that's the whole. And point. that's not a bad I, word. I'm that guy who likes to sit in front of the auction house at level 10 and be pulling in, you know, 1K a week. But uh, obviously the professions have been reworked. 
They've been a wonderful rework. I really appreciate uh, what they've done with Dark Moon Fair. I tapped out my uh, Jewel Crafter at Max Valtiran um, <coughs> Jewel Crafting, and something wonderful happened. Mm. I got Max level, so I got 185, and I got Legion Jewel Crafting go up for the balance. So that's wonderful. That means that I can cap my other expansions without having to learn all the recipes to get the achievement. I don't have to learn all the Legion jewel crafting. I could just do a couple recipes to get over the three star system. And then I can just use Dark Moon Fair to finish up the achievement as long as I finish it before the expansion drops. And this is wonderful, wonderful news because I'm not, I'm not super savvy on Legion. Uh, Jewel crafting or legion um, leather working. I just, I just not the three star system is kind of a little bit too hard for me. I'm super casual. I don't mind doing it for a bit, but not all the time, every day. Um, I did a number of dungeons. <clears throat> if the dungeon takes 15 minutes and somebody wants to requeue, I'm all in there for because I don't mind doing quick dungeons. If somebody takes 45 minutes to run a dungeon with me and they invite me to requeue, I leave the group. Because if it's been 45 minutes to the same dungeon, that means, mm. one, you've got no enchants, oh. two, you've got no gear, two, three, you've got no heirlooms, four, you don't know how to play your class. 45 minutes per five-man dungeon is too long. The only dungeon that should take 45 minutes is if you go all the way through Black Rock Gap. Yeah. <laughs> you do the whole thing and you're undergeared and you want to finish it for the achievement. That is the only reason that you should spend 45 minutes in the dungeon. Any other five-man dungeon that you spend 45 minutes in, you've wasted 30 minutes, in my opinion. Would you agree, Genegas? 45 minutes for a dungeon is a long time. It depends. It, it depends. depends. Depends on what. I, I, I distinctly remember, uh, Seth, Seth, no, not Seth because uh, Shadow Labs, with three, four bosses. Yeah. And Shadow it took Labyrinth. Me, no, Shadow Labs, not Labyrinth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shadow Labs. They it took us. Three four hours. It was it was. Uh, was that pain. heroic or the, the, the regular version? I was. Uh, I think the regular version. I remember that spending was a, four hours. That and, was a killer. Uh, Arthas, the Hall of Mirror Reflections. That was a killer. Yeah, a killer thing. The same thing with the uh, with. Uh, uh, with Alcatraz, was that with Alcatraz? Yeah, yeah. Same, same thing. It, it, the the biggest of uh, dungeons in the respective hubs, like uh, like shattered halls. They they are they are really were really brutal back in 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 BC current. Uh, so what about was, Scarlet Monastery? Forty-five minutes. Would you think that's excessive? No. It, for it depends upon what wing you went with. The one where you kill the uh, the uh, Peltris and the uh, knight at the end. Uh, forty-five. If you re if you don't know, thirty minutes would be okay. 45 is a bit, I mean, again, if you're undergeared, no dungeon is easy. Let's put it that way. Right. If I, you just barely scratch your way into validity, like technical validity of the dungeon, yeah. I can see the monk killing you outright with a one or two shot. Yeah. So. The, the thing I don't mind is I don't mind doing mechanics. I don't mind CC. I don't mind CC. Uh, stuns and whatnot. When nobody interrupts and the healer dies on the pole, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. 
There, the, no, no tank should let the healer die on the pole. Like, I, I, in, in, yeah. in my opinion, it, you can recover almost any dungeon if you if you work at it. But when you just want to do the big pulls to go fast, and then after dying a whole bunch in the dungeon, you want to requeue with those people. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm out. No, you if you if you if you play a game or a, uh, in, in this case. And you know that you are under geared, right. and you go in and pull two groups, or whatnot. Let's stay with the with the Scarlet Monastery, yeah. where you basically just went up the stairs after you you went by the pool there mm-hmm. where the sword is in the middle, yeah. And then you pull the one group that is practicing on the on the uh, on the dummies, the mm-hmm. and yeah. you pull and you pull the group that is in the Uh, um, Middle under area the worshiping. under the roof there, you pull yeah. both of those, and you have under gear tunes. <laughs> you don't deserve anything but dying. Right. It's just stupid, plain yeah. simple stupidity. Because and 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 if you are aware of that, you need to be kicked, because at least at the second time, because because it's it's something that. The only, in my sense. opinion, that's right. only that's the only one. A more tolerant and forgiving. No, I, no. If you if you do it the same server and there's a new player in there. If you do it on purpose, I would consider it trolling. No, yeah. no more, no less. And then and, and I don't want to play with a troll. Yeah. I don't. And that's me as a horde player saying that. So. It's it's something that that I I totally don't understand. If it's a mistake, if it's a mispull, right. I I I I totally I I totally understand that. But if it's a second time, which means you're doing it on purpose, yeah. Oh, let's see how much the the how good the healer is. No, that's a that's a reason to kick that person. So I can tell that's, you. Uh, I did the um, the love dungeon, mm-hmm. and the last pull. I was multi boxing, so I was doing the fast queue. The last pull of the year, on the last dungeon, <laughs> while I was in there, at the end of the dungeon, I was left with one player in there, mm. and he spit on me. <gasps> and I thought, there's no reason for that. No, I no. didn't respond. I didn't report him. I was just like, I was just stunned. Like. Okay, I'm, I may not be as pulling the heels or the DPS that you're looking for, but it's a love dungeon, you know. Like we didn't wipe, nobody died. Right. Why? Why did we? That's, we I don't that's uncalled for. I totally just, uncalled for. Oh yeah. Anyway, um, so retail auction house, like I said, has become really slow. Like I, what I do is I do dungeons and I check the auction house in between the dungeons. And pet battles, and uh, I, I try not to spend gold on EU because I like I try to build my stash. I finally mm-hmm. bought the illustrious tabard, so I have one tabard I can use between my characters, mail it around <laughs> for thirty copper to try and save my purchase. I haven't bought yet the uh, experience boosting uh, banner, so that's my next goal. I have enough gold right now, but I want to make sure. Doctor now sticking over. I need two blue clockwork gnomes to, um, not clockwork gnomes, mm. clockwork robots from Ogremar to buy. I have one. I need a second one, but they're like forty-five gold. Mm. So my uh, horde coon only has twenty-five gold right now. So I need two of them to buy because then you can get the eye that interrupts in. Um, Uh, what's that place? Deadwind Pass. Mm. Once you have the eye that interrupts, you can go to the Twilight Highlands and interrupt a mob that's level 22, and then you can use the, mo- the level 22 mob to level all your other pets. Oh, oh wow! The Twilight yeah, Highlands a is a wait. Stop. It's a You're short talking map. about Arathi Highlands, not Twilight Highlands. Twilight Highlands Twilight is Highlands. a is a, I have cal- a boosted character. I can go to Twilight Highlands. It's Oh, it's level 20. Okay. I was. So, 
the the idea is you get the blue clock, the blue uh, <laughs> blue rocket oil, oh, the blue robot, clockwork yeah. robot. Yeah. You go to Deadwind Pass. You get one of those eyes. Yeah, the Akrin eye. Yeah. yeah. And then you go to Twilight Handlands and you capture a level 22 by interrupting it, right. stunning it, lowering its health. So the level 6 can capture the level 17. You just repeat the quest as long as you have two of those pets. And then once you have two eyes, you go to Twilight Highlands and you capture one of these bird thingies, which is level 22. So the level 17 can capture a level 22 by interrupting it over and over. Because the interrupt move goes first, interrupting gaze. Once you have the level 22, use the level 22 to level whatever you want. So at level 22, my favorite thing to do is to go to North Ren in um, where the uh, Arctic uh, Fox is. And you get Dunborn Barlakir and the Arctic Fox, which are fairly high level. And while you do that... Because the Arctic Fox only comes out when it snows. When it snows, yeah. So snows. most likely you're going to spend a while there. Yeah, the storm peaks. Yep. Yeah. So what you do is you get one hit with the pet that's not so good on health, and you just keep going back in over and over for it to survive the one hit. So I got fortunate, and one of my pets died. One of my pets died. That's fortunate. And it, it popped back up on the immortal round, and it got the XP right away, and it stayed alive. Oh. So that's a cheating mechanic. Right. So, like, if you have an unborn Valkyr mm. and you kill something and it dies on that round, the next round, if the other pets are all dead, the Valkyr is still up and it's an immortal round and it gets the XP. It gets mm. resurrected, yeah. Yeah, there's mechanics you can bypass the pet leveling a little bit. And then once you have enough pets, you can do the Argent Tournament to pick up the real expensive ones. Like the mm. Enchanted Broom mm -hmm. on the side is right. worth 40,000 gold. Yeah, definitely. So if you have time to run the Horde side, like I make, I can make a Demon Hunter Horde side, and then I have both sides covered. Mm -hmm. so I, like I'm, I'm trying to figure out the tactics and strategy without having to boost something right away. I boosted one character to 110. I don't want to boost anything else until um, the expansion drops because I might need that boost for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. And I want to know how the mechanic is going to work for boosting after the patch drops. The next mm. 9.0 patch or the pre-patch. <clears throat> because hopefully mm. we might have a new class or something or that can get through the leveling experience fairly quick. My rogue is level 41. I want to get it to um, Draenor so I can do have two Ickies that I don't have to pay for because I don't have 2,000 gold. I put that 2,000 gold over something else. And uh, I'm going to stay subbed on you for at least one year. My friend, I'll put a picture in the show notes, she already got her Ricky, the pet. Mm. So the first pet you get is this monkey with like a funny yep. looking hat. That's yep. really cool. Mm -hmm. I'll put a picture in the show notes and uh, so far I'm having a really good time with the game but occasionally occasionally things go sideways and I die and then I have to run back in triple well, boxing in plastic is hard yeah at first you have no add-ons no bags and no gear and no water so it's slow to get everything back you have to wait for your I mean, add ons is your own fault. Right. Huh? <laughs> well, I, I'm kind of a purist, but it turns out that um, WoW Classic without add ons is just too hard. <laughs> I can see why wow. people rage quit when they play the game at first, because when you go look on uh, WoWhead, they can't describe mm -hmm. where stuff is, so they put it in coordinates. So if you don't have TomTom, -tom, mm -hmm. How do you find it? Because the map has the fog of war thing. Mm -hmm. If you haven't discovered the area, you have no idea where that is on the map. Right. Yeah. Because plastic is a little bit harder to navigate than. Um, I mean, you can you, you can know, have, you have an add-on. You can have an add-on that removes the fog of war. No mm. problem. True, but would that fulfill the purpose? Because 
honestly, the 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 quest tech sometimes is crap. You can't yeah, I'm, anything. I'm just saying you can. I'm not saying you should. I'm right. just saying you can. It's a personal choice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I managed to group up with one stranger who had an add-on that would use stuff in Korea, and I kept trying to talk to him, and uh, mm. I think I scared him off. He ran away to talk to his mom. <laughs> weird man who was trying to talk to him. Mommy, this guy wants to talk to me. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> he was a mate. Like, we were doubling up on targets in the Wendigo cave, and uh, kept trying to talk to him, and he wouldn't talk. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. And it's the... When they run away, classic, it's not like you can catch up to them or fly to where they are. Nope. They're just gone. Right. And uh, I uh, I made a lot of trips to Wildhead at first. Once you repeat a zone, like the same starting zone over and over, you get the hang of where stuff is. But uh, like I had the quest where the um, you have to find the supplies, like the bucket of bolts and the box of tools. And, the stuff, and I was like, I couldn't remember where one of the bucket of bolts was. I had no idea. So, like, I went to Wowhead, gave me the coordinates. I go, okay, it's there on the map. It's a, there's no there's no location on the map. There's no X. There's no little village icon or anything like that. Um, I went to the Grizzled Den Wendigo Cave. And I once you go in there, you can't come out of there. Because the, the mobs respawn three times as fast as you, you can eat. So it's good to have a party of three or four because it you, you're literally, you're killing something and something spawns right behind you where you just finished killing it. There's like hardly any room to move. So if you have health issues or low armor, you're going to die. <laughs> Bring a friend. Um, I got hogs at Dark Moon Fair on the EU. Mm. I figured I could do the whack-a-mole. So oh. it used to be you had to whack 50 knolls, but they lowered <laughs> it to 45 because I was noticing as I was whacking stuff, sometimes the hit would happen behind me. There was a bit of lag, and I, like it took me mm. 14, 15 attempts, which, I mean, the Dark Moon tokens are only like 20 silver for a box of them. This is not too bad. Um, I'm doing the cooking dailies on my EU account. Because at 100 cooking, I can cook certain good things for my um, my character. And since I'm playing a Pandaren Rogue, you get twice the buff that you would do for a normal food. So yep. whatever food buff you can get on Pandaren Rogue, take it. If somebody gives you food, take it. Don't, don't try to be uh, all apologetic. If somebody's willing to give you a little bit of help, take whatever help they're willing to give you. You may not want their gold. I understand that part. I'm a gold maker. I don't like to take people's gold. But if they'll give you bags or mm -hmm. if they'll give you gear that they will craft for you, take the help. It's really, really handy. It makes them feel good. It makes you feel good. Uh, it makes you better at the game. So just equip whatever uh, you're going to use and don't feel bad about it. I picked up the weathered fishing hat from the loot bag in uh, the fishing daily in Stormwind. I didn't know it was in there. You can use it. It gives you a buff of seven on your uh, fishing. So that's good. I got the strong fishing pole. I had the strong fishing pole in my bags for about three months now. Forgot to use it. Yeah, I, I just had put it in my bag somewhere. I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. I uh, also uh, got the uh, vendors vendoring the cats on the auction house. So you buy the cat from the Cornish, the red Cornish Rex cat, the silver tabby. There's two others. But there's one that sells really well in the auction house. It sells for about 125 gold. The others sell for 50 or 10 gold. So they only cost you a few silver, a few copper. So you buy the cat carrier. You go to the retail no. auction house. You put, not the cat carrier, but you put the pet on there so people can see the stats. I don't know if they come in different breeds, but um, some some cats sell quicker than others. I find that there's a lot of markets that had zero competition with a week ago, and now a week's gone by, and all of a sudden there's like 20 listed on the auction house. I'm like, what happened? Nobody was taking care of this market before, and now I'm here. I'm making gold off of it. I guess I stream it, and people see what's going on on the stream, and they're like, that guy's making gold! <laughs> 
I've talked to a number of people who only ever have like thirty or forty thousand gold on their entire account up to this point. And uh, my friend was complaining that he couldn't buy gold in Classic. I'm like, you know what? There, it, you can't buy gold for a reason. It is Classic. It's meant to be hard. He says he has three quarters of the funds coagulated to buy his first mount. Well, I go, how much is the first mount? He goes between seventy and a hundred gold. I go, what's the? Why wouldn't you buy the epic one? You're just gonna buy one mount. I don't know. I'm just buying the base, the basic mount. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't know how much a mount will cost in classic, but I would like to have three different mounts of three different characters. You know, like a mount on each character, like the ram for the the dwarf. What's the uh, gnome one? The 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 strider. Mechano Strider, yeah. Mechano mm -hmm. Strider for the gnome, and then, uh, you know, like the a fancy horse for the human, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's mm -hmm. kind of my goal in Classic, is to have, to end up with three mounts to see to show that even somebody who knows nothing about it, as long as you get a little bit of help to start, you can get there. Um, I'm kind of discouraged with the retail gold making right now. It's like so slow. I don't know what, what to do. Because I don't want to make a druid just to farm herbs. That's, that defeats the purpose. I have a druid, but it's horde side. Mm -hmm. So it's a troll druid. I might play her, you know, on the other screen while I'm playing classic. I'll have to decide. And uh, that's been my week. Oh, awesome. was your weekend wow mostly i spent my time in Surmar. i'm getting closer thanks to constructs but i am um i went to um dark moon fair got all that done um and the last thing i did was this morning or last night i went to dark moon fair and got on the carousel so i could have that eight more uh rep when i mm -hmm. um it's kind of frustrating now because everybody's downstairs. Now I gotta run downstairs, but um, I've been logging in, running through different um, quests to get my ancient mana. And today I got on my um, uh, space goat. Well, I could party up with you if you want to finish that up at some point. Yeah, we'll do it at some point. It's not that big. I got on my space goat who was a level one tune and I don't even know she was in Stormwind maybe she was I don't know what she was doing in Stormwind but she was a level one um, I call her a space goat uh, what do you call those people Draenei Draenei yes thank you <laughs> so I'm trying to get her into the animal kingdom guild and why is this so hard? Oh, I'm an animal trainer. Bestial is on. So why can't she add her? Where is the button that says add? It's in J info add member. It's in what? Press J. Okay, J. Bottom right corner. Oh, invite member. Okay, there we go. I actually did a really stupid thing where I tried to. Oh, no, here she goes. She's in the guild. I tried to um, uh, log in and get my one of my tunes up to a, um, I mean, I'm sorry, I tried to um, add a month to one of my accounts, <laughs> and I ended up adding it to the wrong account, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, it happens. So now one of my accounts is good till May and the other one is expired. That's what happens when you have too many accounts and you're going back and forth on these stupid screens. Um, I am feeling uh, so much stronger on Aprilian because when she has to go in, and, and it's been silly. I've been just going in, going to somewhere in Suramar, killing a bunch of people, looting a bunch of stuff. Until I get 150 ancient manor and then um, 
going home and um, getting feeding those people. Um, I love being 120 now because it's. I don't even use the masquerade anymore <laughs> because I'm so powerful. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have been trying. I don't know. Oh, I realize I know what I have to do. One of the things I have to do is I have to go and um, go back to Fallenar and get um, get the uh, the shoulder enchant because I'm no longer getting those packs that have the big. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yep. The, uh, yep. Press yes. the mana finding uh, shoulder enchant. Right, because um, get extra mana. Right, because I realized she she changed her. Well, one of the things she's been doing is upgrading her stuff, but she forgot to mm-hmm. get the new the new enchant to do that. And I was like, wait a minute, how come I'm not getting those big purple packs anymore? Yep. Um, and um, so I'm doing different tunes. I decided Shrift is now. She went from level one to level five. She, I. It's funny because she was in Stormwind. I can't even imagine what was she doing in. Stormwind at a level one drain eye. <laughs> um, maybe she was helping someone. I can't even imagine. Was she helping someone? But if she was helping someone get into a guild, then why wasn't she in a guild? Do you know what I mean? But anyways, I took her to Goldshire and she did a bunch of quests. It was kind of weird though because she got the quest where you do the um. Uh, putting out the fires and she couldn't put out the fires nothing happened I don't know if it was because um, because she was a drain eye do you know what I mean no anybody did I lose you guys which fire though oh she was in Goldshire and she was putting out the fires in, um, there's those fires in the crops over there. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, it was a low. the fires in Goldshire. In Goldshire? Yeah. In the, in the um, fields across the way where you also get the weapons from the orcs that you have to kill. Anyways. It, there's orcs in Goldshire? Yeah. No, that's North, Northshire. Northshire Abbey. Northshire Abbey. I'm sorry. Oh, the starting yeah, area. Yeah, 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 the starting yeah. area. That's, that's not Stormwind. That's the, the little castle area there where you start the human. Right. Mm-hmm. So I went back to the human starting area because she was level one. What else is she going to do, right? And all of a sudden, she couldn't put out any fires. So I don't know what that was about. But, uh, hey. Because you didn't get the the item. The, she, got, she had the item. She was spraying. She was at the fires. Spraying her little heart off. And so I ended up just ignoring the quest and abandoning it. And now she is in Goldshire. I'm sorry. Now she's in Goldshire. Mm. Um, I, uh, so I'm leaving her there. She just became a member of uh, uh, Animal Kingdom. And uh, I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to, to play a low-level tune again while I'm playing Aprilian. And, uh, of course, I'm... Running around now, getting some more ancient manor. Um, I kept going back to um, Darkmoon Fair to get the rebuff. I mean, I know that eight eight points isn't going to mean that much, but you know, it's better than nothing. And uh, what else have I been doing? I've also gotten on April, which she hadn't been in in a while. She's 116. I'm hoping to get her to. Max level. She's my uh, my death knight, and uh, I'm gonna be playing her now that I got some money on uh, time on her account. And uh, oh, aprilian has been going back to the garrison to make bags in case um, constructs needs them or anybody needs them. Let me know if you need a hex weave bag. That excellent mm-hmm. bag. And it's just sitting around there waiting for, you know, to be picked up. So, um, one of the things I, and I did go ahead and um, react. Hey, uh, April, can yes. you do me a favor? Yes. 
right now, can you go back to that window and put that code in that I just typed in your thing? You're on April, right? Uh, I don't know which one. Set to April or Aprilian. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a code. Uh -huh. Good for 60 days. Oh. To put it in the right window now. Oh, okay. Don't All put right. it in the wrong window again. I won't put it in the wrong window again. Thank We're you. We're doing live. You're great. Tell, tell us if it works. Okay, I will. I, I, I scratched out the first letter. So the first letter is supposed to be B. But if I scratch <laughs> out an 8, I won't know until you tell me it's right or not. Okay, you are the best. I don't know if I'm the best, but I try. You do try. You do more than try, Constructs. You are excellent. Sometimes I try and um, fail hard. And today <laughs> is supposed to be International Women's Day. So, congratulations to all shout, women everywhere. Shout out to all the women gamers because we know how hard it is to mm -hmm. be a woman gamer in, in a world where men are the supreme. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Not true. Not true, right. So, you should be able to select the whole thing and just paste it in the correct window. Oh, uh, you know what? I logged off, so I'm not on that. Tune. Uh, can you? But if you go to conversation chat with the uh, constructs, it should bring it up for you. Yeah. All right. Let me just paste it to you again. Okay. Do you want me to put it on Twitter? Or would that help? No, no, no. Put it on. Um, why are you not on this tune? Okay, I'll just log off and go into my other tune. All right. Um, but thank you, and, and that's been my week. I am doing the best I can, <laughs> trying to get my night falling and get flying at the same time, and uh, I'm, I'm having fun. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters, exactly. Mm -hmm. And a whole bunch of other things with Grand Nagus. How are you doing, and what do you have for us this week, Grand Nagus? Well, yeah, I have a couple of things. Let's start with the add-ons and with the things that Constrex talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, as he rightfully said, when you want to install add-ons, in uh, in a game version, you need to select the respective game version in the drop-down menu in the top right-hand corner of your of uh, your break, break uh, it down. Twitch. Like, so do it, you do have it for people who are who are dumb like constructs who have no idea what you're talking <laughs> about sometimes. Right. I, I went back last three shows. I, I finally understood all the stuff you were saying. It, it took me that long. If you would let me, I would. <laughs> but, but I'm spontaneous and interrupt suddenly for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you, when you open your, your Twitch client, you have the, the uh, mods tab in the top left corner. You have the uh, Discover, Following, Browse, Games, and Mods. You click on the Mods tab, and then you select World of Warcraft mm. to open the, the add-on uh, window. And then you have on the top right-hand corner, just below the banner, you have your... Um, Three uh, or, or your your little search window, your little uh, yeah. It says C program files eighty six world of whatever wherever you, 
Right. It depends upon where you have your game installed. Right. So you, on the you left, use, it says my add-ons, and on the right, it's got those search box, like you say. You get, in the, in the left, it says my add-ons and get more add-ons, depending upon, uh, so, so that's where you, where you want to, you have your, your my add-ons is the current, the installed add-ons list, and if you click to the right of that, the get more add-ons, yeah. you get the list or a, a uh, interface where you can uh, select and search for more add-ons. Mm. Then you enter uh, uh, in the search tab, you can enter the name of a specific add-on, or you can browse by like the popular new releases or whatnot tabs. Uh, but we go back to to the basics first, you go to the, you have the top right uh, hand corner, you have the, the drop down menu yeah. with, with every available different type of game that you have. So in my case, it's the classic, mm. the PTR and the retail version. So, uh, the drop down will reflect those three. You select whichever one you want. The procedure is the same regardless of what version you choose to install to. It is the same regardless of how many clients you have running with any respective version, except the PTR, because the PTR is a singular uh, special version that it's not linked to any client uh, that you that you use so the PTR is a one one client overall access thing unless how you, how would you go about installing the PTR like on my EU if I let's say I wanted a PTR just on my EU no mm. doesn't work as I said it's an overarching one you have access to the PTR, the PTR. It's not, the PTR server is not uh, a server that is uh, localized. Mind blown. Wait a second. My EU account can meet up with my US account on the PTR and it can have four clients running on the same window? Mm. No, you can have, you can have, I don't know if you can have multiple running. I would imagine you can, you can run up to four clients because there are four PTR servers. Yes, yes, all right. <laughs> so, so you can, you can, you can uh, import different clients, uh, different characters to different servers. I'm not sure if there is the uh, a barrier between the PTR. Uh, PVE on PVP servers. I haven't checked that yet. That might be the case because there, if I remember correctly, there are two PVP and two PVE clients. Oh, I know what I'm doing on my next vacation. So you can you can theoretically play together uh, with your EU characters and the US characters because they are not regionalized. Awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's the case. And then if you do, you can do the same for, and I haven't installed this yet, there is, as we talked about last week, uh, mm -hmm. the classic PTR. That would be a potentially fourth addition to the drop menu. Uh, too much, too much. I'll, I'll have to go back to listen to what you say. No, I'm just, I'm just saying. At, I, I at just the moment, pulling a uh, Deadpool move on me, where you murder me with extreme prejudice, and you keep going on murdering me. With mm. your awesome, at, awesome. At the moment, the oh, maximum wow. drop-down menu entries are four: with mm. the classic, classic PTR, retail, and retail PTR, which is called PTR. So. 
And then eventually we are going to have uh, alpha and beta, but those are clients that very likely won't have add-ons enabled for quite some time, so uh, you can pretty much ignore those. So you pick, in your case, your classic folder, uh, right. and then you can go to your uh, get more add-ons tab, yep. and then you basically search for a name uh, or of an add-on that you pre uh, have previously determined, and put it in the search window. In your case, you would go with Identity2 or, or TomTom, as you talked about. Or, wait a second. Found out this week, you can install Trade Master Classic. <laughs> you Another can do one. that. Yes. So, you open that entry uh, and click on the Install button next to yeah. it, and that in installs it to your WoW Classic folder. It will right. even notify you when you check Twitch that there's an update. It, there's an update in Classic. It'll, it'll let you know. Of course. It's fantastic. So, now, now the thing is, if you want to check out the website for any, um, any add-on, you click on the name in the My Add-ons tab uh, at the entry for the respective add-on, and it will bring up a little... Uh, it will switch to the Get More Add-ons, right. and it will uh, tap, and it will give you a little overview window. And it will, in the top right-hand corner, below the drop-down menu, it will have a button that says Website. So, if you, uh, why I'm saying this is I want to mention this because of one distinct difference. If you click on that website button, it will most likely take you to the, um, to the curseforged.com, to the mm -hmm. curse website, and it will have a, uh, overview over the add-on that you chose to see uh, the website of. It will say how many downloads you have, last updated, and it will say the game version. It would tell you that. Now, it will most likely reflect the current retail game version. Even though it says, or it reflects the classic game version in your add-ons folder or in your in your uh, Twitch client, but that doesn't matter because as long as the game is available, uh, the add-on is available for both game versions, classic as well as retail, retail as well as classic, depending upon. It will always reflect the retail game version number, always. The only reason it would reflect the, uh, the classic version game folder is, number is if there is no retail, retail version, version on, your, yeah, on your hardware. So don't get irritated by that. It's all proper. It's working as, 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 as intended. intended. <laughs> yeah. A word, so, a word so, of caution, however, if I may. Yep. Yes, if you, may. you, by any chance, have reinstalled WoW, mm. let's say you have two versions of WoW on your hard disk. Mm -hmm. A backup version, which resides on a separate drive. Yes. And your correct version, which resides on your C or your D drive. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have two versions. Mm. Occasionally, Twitch will not recognize which version you are currently using and will default to the wrong installation. It mm. happened to me. I was on my mm. EU account, 
and I could not get Trade Skill Master to cooperate. Mm-hmm. I was fighting with it, fighting with it. I spent like a day and a half trying to get Trade Skill Master to update. It wouldn't. Mm-hmm. So I did the dumb thing. I went and I got the premium Trade Skill Master again. Mm. I'm now paying $50 a year <gasps> for Trade Skill Master. And then I realized I have a backup hard drive on my computer and I just need to change the path mm-hmm. to the correct drives for Trade Skill Master to work. Mm. Yeah. Ta da! Trade Skill Master works. Mm. Yep. The funds are already out of my account. Mm. As and acquisition, rule of acquisition 19 states. Satisfaction. Satisfaction is not guaranteed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Sometimes the problems between the charity people, like if you're going to install something on your computer, make sure you have the correct path. Yes. There's correct. no, which doesn't differentiate for you. You have to be in control. It's, it's, it's a feature, as, not a bug. Yeah. It's the same thing with any computer. Yes. And I, I refer to that whenever I talk about a certain former boss I have. <laughs> it's, it's so fitting. Yes. Which is, the statement is, a computer is only as stupid as the person feeding it. Yes, exactly. So if you feed it with stupidity, it will reflect stupidity. If you reflect it, with, uh, if you feed it with smarts, it will, be, it will be smart, but only if you feed it that. Because that guy was, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't, okay. So anyway, <laughs> it's, it's uh, I, I think he had a big, huge tablespoon. Like any. Of stupidity? Yeah. yeah. It was the only thing he could eat with. Anyway, yeah, so, and, and then you basically, uh, by going to more add-ons, you install, you, you look for, and then click on the little button mm. that's below the, the name of the add-on when you, or, or ne- sorry, next to the add-on when you look in your get more add-ons list, mm-hmm. you have the, you search for a keyword in get more add-ons, like uh, uh, like if you want to add a, a a new if you if you have an upcoming best example if you have an upcoming world event, mm. right, and you look for a handy notes module potential handy notes module, right, you just enter in get go to more add-ons get to more add-ons. Click on search and enter the term handy notes, and then it will automatically list all the handy the add-ons that include the handy notes term in its name. And you can just click on install next to each respective uh, entry that you want to to install. Mm. So that's as simple as can be. It really is. Mm. And uh, and then again, make sure that you choose the wrong version in the drop-down menu. The right path is installed. Uh, if you have multiple clients running, you can in, you can choose to tell Twitch that you have <laughs> multiple paths for the same game version. So, like Construct says, if he wants to keep his add-on folder in the backup version up to date. He can just add that path to the drop-down menu, right. and then click on that drop-down menu entry every once in a while and update the folder, the <laughs> end, the <laughs> add-ons folder that way. That's perfectly legitimate. So and if you, whenever they were putting out new versions of Trade Skill Master, all your groups would be destroyed, and that was <clears throat> a real difficult thing to set up groups back in the day. Yeah. So 
So again, uh, and make sure, I'm not sure as to where exactly that is, but if you go to the, um, um, if you go to the setup, let me just see exactly where that is. Uh, you can window help, where is it? Settings here, you go to into the settings, the file and the settings, and then you can click to, on add-ons, and then you can, scan, you can scan your computer, or you can add a game. I would always choose locate game right. in the add, add game tab, because if you scan the computer and you have some old buried version of the game somewhere, that's going to be added as well. Mm. And, and uh, I mean, it's nice to, to have that, uh, have uh, the computer tell you, oh, there is one or two old game versions buried somewhere mm. that you then can finally find and delete. But still, it, it, I would think it, it's way easier to add a game version than to re remove it. Right. So I think that uh, I would always go through the add game in the settings. And then you can, you can even set a preferred game. You can uh, look... Something that you talked about earlier, Constrax, is the update functionality. Yes. And there is, when the updates, you can set um, the frequency of update checks that uh, the, the client does. So you can choose between 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, and three hours. Uh, so you can you can have it have it check in in, in those uh, intervals. Uh, the day mm. before patch day, it's re recommended to not load all your add-ons if you want the game to boot up. It depends. It depends because because. Uh, if you if you know that that you or first of all as we say so often make a backup before patch day right so so nothing gets shut up mm. we know that that quite a few add-ons tend to destroy uh, add-on settings especially not the add-ons themselves but add-on settings and uh like, like the, the configuration, the UI configuration is quite, uh, can be a length, have a lengthy process of re resetting and redoing them. Mm. Another thing I would like to, to uh, remind people of is if you have a substantial list of add-ons, let's put it that way. Like you. Like me. Um, there is a, a uh, slider in the settings that calls, uh, that, that you can go to and it will let you uh, choose how many simultaneous downloads for updates and installment you want to have running. Mm. So if you are patient or if you have a slower than average download speed, you don't want to choose a number that's too high mm. uh, for for the for the download at the same time. The maximum is obvious. Uh, the the minimum is obviously one. The maximum is twenty. Mm. So if you have twenty downloads running at the same time, even though they might not be um, significant. If you click the button that says update all, 
and 20, add, uh, 20 downloads start simultaneously. Mm. Even though not, not big, it will still strain your system that for that moment or that couple of seconds. So it might be something to remember that you can uh, you can uh, uh, get your computer to go to its knees for for a brief period of time, and that might have uh, issues if you like stream something, or the the uh, the resources will go up, and then some something will will go awry. Uh, momentarily and also you can have backup space set uh, your current uh, you currently allocate so many megabytes of drive space for backup storage so the buffer uh, is is uh, so and so big so you can the maximum is 10 uh, so, depending <laughs> upon how much RAM you have running right. uh, in your system, that's a significant, can be significant as well. <laughs> and I think that's pretty much uh, what you what you want to what you want to know. If there's anything else, oh, I, I I will definitely hit you up for the after the show or sometime for the um, the uh, PTR because I've installed the PTR but never played it. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know the first thing. It's like classic. I don't know the first thing, and I do I do think that I'm okay with a little bit of spoilers. I just don't want to spoil on too the show. much. Yeah, right. Or on yeah. the show, right? Exactly. All right. Yep. Yeah, so basically that's that's almost almost what it is. Just again the key thing is remember where you install your add-ons, what what version. Nothing is worse than you logging into a game and then start frantically looking at all settings and all things and why doesn't this add-on work? Only to realize after hours and hours of looking and and uh, and searching and and uh, spending money doing that. Oops! I installed it in the wrong in the wrong client. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. So yeah, there is that. Mm. And again, if you have a add-on that you use in retail, and you find out that it has a cl classic version. It will still, if you look um, in the um, on the uh, page of the Curse Forge page, mm. there will not be a version visible that is uh, thirteen one point thirteen. Uh, there will be. Uh, versions that are available for both um, for both clients, they are optimized. Oh. But that doesn't mean that the one installment doesn't include the other. It's just that that uh, you you can have extra stuff added. Um, so that, like, I don't know for size or, or, or what what they do, they just add add things to to it with with different uh, versions, but it's still the same overall game version. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. Okay, as for my week, I haven't mm -hmm. talked about that yet. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said last week, I checked my 
my toy box and found that I was relatively close to the 400 achievement. Oh, nice. 400 toys, and I uh, thought that I should start hunting. So my report on the hunt is that I reached the 400. Mm. I'm going to go through a couple of them, or the ones that I found, uh, to reach the 400. So people might... I'm doing this uh, intending to let people know that these toys exist and that they are pretty easy to get. Mm. So uh, if you are still missing one or the other or a couple of these toys, you can look up the show notes and I have them all linked with notes to how to obtain them. Mm. So, let's start. Um, the Cloud Ring uh, is, a, is a toy that you get from the Order of the Cloud Serpent in Pandaria. Mm. It requires the revered reputation and it also re to buy and to, to learn. And it also requires that reputation level to use it. <clears throat> Which means any tune that wants to use the cloud ring needs to be revered with the cloud serpent. The crash uh, thrashing robot is the next one. That's the original crash and thrashing item. It's a engineering crafted toy from vanilla I think 280 if I remember correctly somewhere in the 200s mm. it's a again if I remember correctly no it isn't or or is it from the from the burning crusade I can't remember anyway one of those it's a yeah it's, it's an engineering crafted toy mm. and it drops uh, from, oh yeah, it's a, it's a BC toy because you get it from, you get the, the, the schematic from high level, uh, max level elite uh, mobs or you can be lucky like me, like I was to find it on the auction house. Mm -hmm. um, so, and if you if you have your your local engineer of choice, a friend or whatnot, they might have it. <laughs> um, you need a couple of of bars, of fel fel steel bars, and uh, and gold bars. And uh, some, some like ten, eight or ten bars, mm. and then the gold core. Uh, so it, it's not too difficult to get them. Uh, maybe a couple of hundred gold for for the mats, and then a engineer with uh, with the with the schematic should do the job, mm. and obviously uh, some tip. What, what is always appreciated. Mm. The words of Akunda, Akunda being the rhino loa in Vordun. Um, you get that from the Voldunai emissary in, uh, in Voldun, mm -hmm. and it requires exalted rep to buy. No um, no rep for use, so you can use it regardless of your rep. Oh, nice. The Emerald Winds is another um, toy that I 
tried to get for quite a while and I simply forgot about it because I was too frustrated. Mm. And it is uh, the reward for completing the hatchling of the talent achievement in Sylvan Falls in High Mountain, mm. which is if you go to the edge of that one area that leads down into um, Surama, you see the um, one of the wild gods um, and she gives you a quest to do or if, if it's been if, if you tried it before she won't have a quest but you just talk to her after you obtain the quest and so um, Aviana is her name uh, and she asks you to uh, or she gives you a buff and you get thrown, thrown up into the air and then while gliding down after she gives you those wings like little golden wings you have to collect those huge uh, green orbs ten of them the achievement uh, is um, you need to collect all these orbs and then you you uh, slowly fall or uh, uh, glide down while you you collect those orbs. The best way to do it is to have a top down view of your character and you can see all the orbs below you and then you just glide and steer your way through the orbs you will see there's a little poof effect of little uh, um, as if they burst but they don't really so you can see on the on the edge of of the orbs you see this little green mist Mm. almost exploding out of them without destroying them and then they uh, dissipate after a bit but initially they don't get like a, like a, a soap bubble it, 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 it erupts, it, that doesn't happen so it's, sometimes it's a little difficult to see whether you collected the ore properly or not, you can do it repeatedly Mm. If you missed one, that's not an issue. It's a little unnerving if you if you missed one and you really didn't realize that you did. So that's Emerald Winds. Mm. Um, a giant death web egg is a toy that you get. You loot it from the curious death wind egg in the death web hollow cave in Talador, in, uh, in Draenor, in the Wallet of Draenor expansion. All the way to the south is an area called Death, Death Web Hollow uh, with a huge, whole bunch of webs, uh, uh, spiders of different sizes and different types. Right. You go into the cave, you go all the way down, it's like a mine, and then you go down, don't run up the right-hand ramp, but go down into the um, left-hand uh, surface or area there, and then you walk around, uh, and then you go right, all the way at the back, kill the mobs, obviously, and there is a egg that's a little bigger than most other uh, uh, eggs that are like webbed, web covered egg. Mm. Uh, and you can like mouse over and you see the the purple uh, outlines of a of a treasure together. Uh, that's the indication that you found the right one. 
Uh, the Gorin log roller is from a rare boss. That's like one of the more uh, RNG dependent ones that you get. Uh, it's from Giblet the Cowardly in Frostfire Ridge, and it has a drop chance of about 13 percent. Uh, yeah, what you do is you yeah again rare boss go kill it loot it yes or no okay, that's basically it thirteen percent chance symbol of growl is from the finder pruck um, in my case as a horde character cost uh, it's from uh, a vendor, Prak is a vendor in Nazjatar. Mm. Uh, there is a corresponding vendor in the Alliance camp, obviously. I don't know the name of it. Uh, it costs 75 prismatic mana pearls. So, shouldn't be too difficult to get since by now most people should easily have 75 pills. You get 30 for completing the um, world quests when the dailies, when the emissaries up, mm -hmm. or 20. Mm. Yeah, again, 75 isn't, isn't as difficult to get. Yeah. The next couple are from Nashitar as well. The Eternal Palace Dining Set. <laughs> you get that and I need to to explain this a little if you gather all the treasures in Nazjatar one type of treasure is a so called arcane chest um, you can look it up in uh Wowhead, I linked, again, as with all these items, I linked, it, they, I converted, converted them to links, so you can just click on them and, and check the, the Wowhead entry. Arcane chests are sometimes linked to tasks, like untethering of the, the untethering game or the, the, uh, the, uh, what's it called, the, the Tetris type game. Right. There, so there are 20 or, or 20 plus um, of, of these chests. I think 24 or something like that. Uh, again, the Eternal Palace Dining Set requires you to open and loot 12 of these chests. The 12 Regardless of how which one you do it first and twelve, the twelve arcane chest will always, regardless of which one it is, will always have that item to loot. Same thing with the next one with the ocean simulator. That you get when, once you loot the twentieth chest, arcane chest. Mm. Um, then we have the Flaming Hoop, which is a Legion leatherworking item. So you go to your resident leatherworker, Legion leatherworker, give them the mats, and they just craft it for you. Same with the Leather Pet Leash. It's again from Legion leatherworking. And then, yeah, that's basically easy as can for for obvious reasons. It's, it's very, the only thing that might be a little problematic is that each of those two, the Flaming Hoop as well as the Leather Pet Leash, requires one of the Fell Hides, oh. which are quite... And that was a soul uh, Excuse me? Those are soul bound, right? Those are soul bound, as, as is any of the special items uh, f 
for the for so the, the leather worker has to collect it itself. Yes. So and and they are I, I think the rarest and most sought after of them all. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and that for me, the leather pet leash got me to four hundred, and that rewarded me the toy box tycoon title uh, or, or uh, not title uh, achievement mm. and I got Brutus the pet Brutus which is a mechanical dog Ooh. so I was quite happy with that it took me about three hours to collect these ten so if you have normal did you, did you have a guide or did you go by what was in the um, the toy collection I just went through my toy collection, looked at the respective requirements. Mm. Uh, I looked up for, for the ones that weren't perfectly uh, described or like locations or whatnot for, for like for the for the egg and for 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 the uh, for the first one for uh, for the uh, sorry for the um, for the rare, mm. um, I, I looked it up on, on Wowhead. So basically, it's not too difficult. And I just went through my, my list of uncollected toys and looked at which ones were easily or not so difficult to obtain. Um, and yeah, that's basically how I did it. Obviously, it's different for everyone because not very many people have the exact same of missing toys. So just go through your, and as you can see, with my, with the alpha, uh, alphabetical order, that's, that's quite alphabetical. I started, the first one I started was a cloud ring, so that was C. And then I made it through Emerald Winds, uh, Goran Lock Roller, and then Flaming Hoop, L for uh, Leather uh, Pet Leash. So that's when I stopped, obviously. Uh, I could have gone on, but, but really didn't see the purpose of, of going on beyond the 400. Um, I effectively collected 11 because one, uh, I switched over to a character and didn't realize that that character didn't uh, reflect one of the um, toys that it couldn't use. So the counter went back one. Ah. So effectively, I collected 11, even though the flaming hoop that I uh, learned was the 400, but on the tune that I learned, it was only the 399th, even though it got the, I got the achievement already and had made the leather pet leash already. So I learned the 400 for this tune, even though for the entire account, it was the 401st. <clears throat> so... Yeah, that's uh, that's the my my little uh, get ten or eleven toys in <laughs> quite easy fashion right. guide. Um, the other things, some of the other things I did was on my Sindori Hunter. I got the achievement on a massive number of missions, which is complete 500 garrison missions. Um, also, I got the achievement champion of the Volpira, which is rescue 50 Volpira in Vordun. And by rescue... Uh, the term rescue refers to 
to um, when you go through different areas of Voldoon, mm. you see from time to time the Sithra lock that have uh, that uh, have some uh, chained and bound uh, Volpira following them. So right. what you do is you just kill the Sethralak, and that means that you obviously free them, you rescue them, from, uh, the, the, the Volpira from the Sethralak. And if you do that, the, normally it's like one or two. Sometimes you're lucky, and you have three Volpira in chains, so you get to uh, get to rescue 50 a little faster. Most often times it's, it's areas where you do um, where you do uh, world quests and they basically uh, uh, are around, they just wander around and you just uh, aggro and kill the, the Seth Relax, and then uh, slowly but surely you, you get the counter up to 50. If there's a counter that goes higher than 50, I do not know. It wouldn't surprise me. Much the same way as on Argus, you have the counter for, I, I think, 10, 50, 2,000 demons killed. Uh, and you get the respective achievement for for the uh, for the respective thresholds. So it might be that there are uh, additional uh, achievements for for higher numbers. I'm not sure. I haven't checked it. Okay, so I started leveling a gnome hunter Ooh. some time some time back. Uh, like way back when in Legion, and uh, got her to 110. And for some reason, I went back to the server where she was on, and I thought, huh, okay, let's see what, how fast I can get that character to 120. Just like, uh, yeah. Challenge. Like yeah. an experiment. Right. So I decked her out in, in heirlooms, mm -hmm. uh, went to Dark Moon Fair, get that buff, and then I started. Mm -hmm. uh, and after the first day, I was at 114 and a bit. And then uh, after the... the on the next day, I did some some things on, on, on other tunes, and I realized, huh, this is something you're missing, you know? and that's war mode. Oh, right. So, so, and I realized, huh, <laughs> gnomes are obviously alliance side, filthy... Alliance, yes. and but they have at the moment at that time they had the twenty five percent war mode buff. So, huh? So, Chromie when, would say, "Shame on you." <laughs> who would say that? Chromie. No, she wouldn't. She isn't. She she isn't alliance. Though. She would say, "Shame on you," because she's not alliance. Mode. Chromie isn't an alliance character. Mm. So, um, so I thought, hmm, okay, why not? Let's, let's just try this and see how far I can get before I get too frustrated from getting killed over and over. So I, um, I turned on war mode at 116. And uh, that got me... Uh, a total of 90% bonus, mm. which 55% from the heirlooms, mm. since I don't have the fishing ring, 10% mm. from Dark Moon Fair, mm. 
and 25% from the warm mode. So that's 90% Why don't you have the all. fishing ring? Is this your second account? I don't have the fishing ring at all. Really? Yeah, never had it. <laughs> the only the only item I ever collected, for, the only time I ever won the fishing tournament, which I didn't win, but it was like third place. When I was in the in the winning bracket, let's put it that way, yeah. was when I got the boots, I think, back in the, on, on the EU sometime. You know what we need to do for you, Grand Agus? Oh? We need to go as a guild to the fishing tournament one day, and all of us are going to camp the other pools that everyone's <laughs> trying to get at the end, and you'll be fishing at the other end, and we'll summon you right to the finish line. <laughs> so I have an alliance, or if you want to do it alliance at horde side, I'm not so sure. Right. I have well, an you alliance don't need to do that. You just Two level warlocks. Yeah. So we'll we'll summon you right at the end there when they announce the first winner, mm. and you, you got to have forty. Mm. I know. I know, is where I know all the. Huh? I know all about the rules. It's just too frustrating that you just got like what fifteen or sixteen. When the winner is already trick, announced. Yeah. My trick, how I got mine, is I set my hearth to Booty Bay. Yeah, I know. And as the contest was winding down, I flew further and further and further away from Booty Bay. And yeah. I hearthed, and I got second. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how but I it's did hard. it. it's mm-hmm. hard. It's very, very hard. With a warlock, we can summon you direct on top yep. of the turn-in guy. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, and so that made it um, my my rested mm. XP lasted through almost through one fourteen. So, and that I didn't write that down, but but basically a day and three quarters. Mm, it took me bad. from one ten to one twenty. That's pretty good. Yeah, excellent. It that's wasn't, amazing. It wasn't half bad. Yeah. So yeah. if you if you are running a tune on the faction that has the twenty five percent buff, which is the maximum, right, for warm up, um, you can get up to eighty percent because obviously uh, Darkmoon Fair isn't up all the time. Right. So at a ninety. Eighty-five uh, percent, if you if you own the the fishing thing, that is right. So um, yeah. So if you want to, and it's another heirloom, so it's accessible to every everybody. To not yeah. O- yeah, not only the everybody one that won the, the won the tournament. Right. Um, so then. At 120, I thought, no, that was before 120. Mm. Uh, that was when I when I decided to start it leveling. I thought, hmm, mm. my my uh, Chendorai hunter had gotten uh, her lock in a hug pet uh, a while back now, mm. and I thought, let's just see how how long it's gonna take to to get that and. Uh, Said like, like mm. going go a couple of hours, maybe four or five, to see and then see how how that turned out. Um, and I went to to Shodasar Basin, um, flew my rounds um, from from spawn point to spawn point, and then uh, eventually I thought this isn't going to work, so I looked up my tunes on on the other character, how many uh, servers uh, I was uh, I was represented at with a tune that's high enough because uh, my gnome hunter is on my main account, so that's where I had the most diverse set of realms. So my second account doesn't have nearly as many realm presences with high enough tunes. Hmm. So you decided to I fix went, that. 
<laughs> yeah, so I only have two or three uh, realms. And then the first one was, was uh, doesn't, didn't work. I went through through uh, all the spawn points and wasn't there. And then the second one, I logged in and uh, oh yeah, up north uh, near the the uh, the area where the the uh, the uh, what's it called the Titan facility is on the Uluar north. No, 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 no. Uh, in Cholasa Basin, it's not north. It's West, oh. the western, uh, the western area. Uh, there was a spawn point there, a singular spawn point, and that's where, thankfully, uh, Lock and the Hack was up. So I, first I was aghast, I was like, oh my God, need to get this. And then I, I swooped down, got out my, my, my frost trap, Trapped it, and I had already prepared, obviously, and dismissed my pet, so I could just go in and and tame it. And uh, yeah, I I on the second realm jump, I got lock and a hack on my second character overall. It took me about two two and a half hours, mm. which was way 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 better than I'd ever imagined it would be. Right, definitely. So that was that was really really great, and uh, I really got used to to playing in war mode on my hunter because you have two abilities or the two abilities I picked on the hunter uh, as as uh, PvP abilities are obviously available to you regardless of you being in the uh, battleground or arena or not. Right. As soon as your war mode uh, is on, you have access to the PvP abilities, whether you do PvP or not. So it's basically two free abilities or, or passive abilities if you so choose. And on the Hunter, I chose two active abilities one is a AOE damage ability, and one is a um, ability to get have a a crocolisk summoned, basilisk summoned mm. that does mass relatively massive DPS to your target. It gets summoned at the the your target's location. And then wanders around, so to so, so to speak, and basically gnaws at, at the at the enemy. Mm. It's quite does quite quite good damage. Uh, and the other one is a is a um, ability that you place, mm. and uh, then you'll have like couple of birds coming and they're going to like circle around that area and doing AOE damage inside that area. Like a whirlwind type of, of area. Looks good. It's, it's not nearly as effective as the Basilisk, but it's still it's still good. I really and like it's those. added things. damage and that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, and something that is quite significant if you are a lower level character mm. is the fact that Lock of the Hack is a spirit beast. Oh. And they have that special spirit beast key that you can use mm. as an ability. You can target whatever you want, friendly target yourself, the, the the pet itself or someone else and then you can use that ability the, the, the pet ability and then you, the target will be healed for a substantial amount 
and and that is really really nice as well. Obviously, it's not a PvP ability. It's a standard special spirit beast attack or ability. So that's something that's uh, uh, on top of that. And if you have your ability, your your healing ability that uh, you use where you have your your pet healed by 100% mm. plus a certain amount of healing goes to you as well and you have your mend pet and you have your spirit beast heal you have three quite quite substantial heals mm. to work with of of which two are can be directed to you and are directed to you. And the third one, the men pet, is obviously for your pet only. But yeah, that makes it makes makes the hunter a little more survivable to have that spirit beast uh, heal. And since Lock and the Hack is a tank pet, uh, that's that's quite good too. Because not all not all pets, spirit beast pets, are f uh, of the same uh, family. Right. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much been it for me for, for this week. Yeah, awesome. that's been my week. Awesome. I guess it's time for email now. Email sex? Email, da 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 Email, da 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 La da da You've got mail. Email. Who's next? I'm addicted to you, baby. Lovely little email. da 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 And now it's time for our email from Kyle, because Kyle is awesome. And Kyle writes... It has been a busy couple of weeks, but now our trimester is finally over. I only need to finish up a little bit of grading, and then I get to enjoy spring break. Yay! Will I level my rogue that is calling to me? Will I hop onto classic? Ooh, who knows? But I am excited to finally have some extended free time to play. And so are we, Kyle. Here is part two of clips from episode 400 for our blast from the past. Enjoy. Kyle. All right, let's listen to Kyle's blast from the past. And we're glad that you're finally going to get some time to play because you deserve it. Because mm -hmm. when you're not doing blast from the past, you're shaping young minds to prepare them to be functioning adults. And we appreciate that. Yay, Kyle. We have a special segment that we want to start the show. I know we usually are want to start the show with a Juno and Pixie Girl. But to commemorate our 400th episode and our 8th anniversary, which is nicely kind of coincided, um, we have a special segment from a show. Yay. Yay. Exciting. Excellent. That is exciting. Yeah. So let's listen to a show of Earth and Ring and Australia. Australia. <laughs> Australia's Airy Ring. Yeah. Hey, Aprilian, Lita, Teeter, and Rogue Slayer, and any guests? Maybe I got Gunter back. A show here, just submitting a quick message to wish you all a very best 400th Christmas special mega extravaganza episode. 400, eh? That's a pretty special number. Uh, I know I'd be remiss and Jeppy would be really disappointed if he was there if I didn't tell you something about the number 400. <laughs> so, apart from it being a square number, uh, you know what the square root of, of 400 is, of course, naturally. I know who else Seven. is square. It's the number of years in the repeating cycle of leap and non-leap years. Okay. But most importantly, 
Uh, just one cow can belch and fart enough harmful methane gas in a single day to fill around 400 litre bottles. There you go. You really want to know wow. that, didn't you? Anywho, rather than give you my favourite memory of Control at Wow, which of course is a famous, uh, it sounded funnier in my head, New Year's episode, I want you ladies to tell us what your favourite memory is and then I'll try to guess what they were. April can play my guesses uh, after you've after you've let me know. So uh, good luck getting them right. Bye. Okay, we're back. Oh wow, thank you, Rochelle. And that's a that's a big challenge. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think my favorite episode was when we had. Um, oh, I don't know. You go first, Lita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got one. I've got one. Okay, awesome one. go ahead. I think my favorite thing was the first time um, the, the episode where the first time we heard Morgane sing. Oh yeah, yeah. I that mean, was her nice. voice is just so incredible, and we get so many great submissions from our listeners. But that was just, I think that's one of my favorites. I have one. My my favorite are are the the. The sort of outtakes and faux pas and, and speaking wrong kind of things. And of those, my favorite all time was when Aprilian was telling us about her latest trip to the Argent Tampon. <laughs> 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 you know, it's very hard with those lances and, and charging in. <laughs> That one. Yeah. Um, I, I think I, I'm going to be a little bit broader and I'm going to say the very first time that I heard Controller Wow and I, like you, brilliant, went, oh, my God, there are people like me. <laughs> and, and you know, because up until then I just thought, you know, this alt playing and, and everyone didn't seem to do it. So... I was, I just felt like I was this super weird um, person who, you know, that, that my friends at the time were like, what are you doing, making another alt? I'm like, yeah, just leave me alone. I'm having fun. And I found my first podcast was the one that just was like, oh, my God, there's these people like me. This is, this is good. So, so yeah, I, I think the very first time that I heard call. Oh, excellent. Anyone else? Well, Lost Cause in the um, chat room is wondering whether or not a- your rap is going to be amongst Ash's favorites. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Oh, yeah. That was, that was a, uh, fortunate, unfortunately, or fortunately, it didn't make it to the podcast, but yeah. And, uh, that was a, things uh, happen in the chat room. Yeah, that was a chat room special. Uh, and what was your favorite moment, Aprilia? I was going to say when you, when the first episode, when, Rogue Slayer and Lita joined me and Tidra, and we got rid of the, rid of the dead weight. But I Whoa. thought that would be kind of rude. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, and it was funnier in my head. <laughs> Son of a! I don't know. It's hard for me to say. Every episode has been my favorite. I've I've enjoyed doing this podcast from head to. I guess, I guess for me, maybe my favorite episode was when the one I got, I first got an email. <laughs> I should go back and, and see which one that was. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's Someone's see. Someone's listening. <laughs> Let, let's see if Asheo guessed. And here is Asheo's response. All right, ladies. Let's, let's see how I go. So, April. Well... Apple can't really commit, so I don't, I don't think she'd actually pick anything <laughs> apart from maybe uh, being happy to get rid of Jeppy and I. Whoa! Uh, Whoa! Lita, Lita's a, a sentimentalist, so I reckon probably something like discovering that there's other people like her that's alcoholic would have been a very happy moment for her. Uh, wow. Tidra's into bloopers. She, she really, really loves the bloopers. She, she, loves, she loves a bit of a chilly more. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, the uh, jousting and the Argent tournament thing would be, be something, something to do with, with up there, I'd reckon. And Rogue Slayer, uh, Rogue Slayer has, has submitted uh, 
several uh, musical entendres. And so I'm thinking that she wants me to sing The Hills Are Alive With Music with Morgan here, um, who's, who's out in Australia at the moment, and she's about to sing live with me. I know, I know it's Gunter, uh, someone here. I don't, I don't know. Anywho, I uh, hope I did okay, and uh, you girls have a great show, and I'll see you for your 500th. And we're back in three, two, one. That well, was amazing. It was pretty that amazing. These posts are so well. Except it's pretty freaky, actually, to be honest. Except somehow he psychically oh, reversed yeah, me and Pedro. Oh, yeah. 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 That was but, amazing. Other than that. Yeah, he did a really good job, I thought. <laughs> See, just, oh. You know what's annoying is that at least he could have got his ass into gear and come on live. I know. Oh, no. Well, exactly. you know. He's pretty slack. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Ashea. <laughs> oh, I think. When he says he's a freak. Yeah. <laughs> I earlier, Craig Negus was thinking, gee, I thought I should be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you don't with that loser. Yeah. So no, you, Ajayo, you tell us what's your favorite memory besides I the. I told uh, you. Yeah. It was it was funnier in my head. <laughs> the New Year's Eve episode. Well, there's a reason why I don't get drunk anymore. Although maybe for the 400th and second episode, which would be or maybe, yeah. which would be um uh, early January. Yeah, or maybe we can move it back to 1 a.m. on uh, Thursday night. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Julie thought I was nuts when I used to have my alarm go off in the middle of the night so I could get up and sit in the chat room and and listen to this live. (laughs) Uh, What are you doing? (laughs) It's fun. It's fun. You must be using a word of the. Very sneaky. Yes. (laughs) That was very well done. Thank you, Ashea. I continued on the Iron Man track. Mm. So, so when we last left last week, I had a little bit ironic, my no monk, and she was up to level 28. Um, so she was doing, she was hot, you know, she was running around a Rathi basin and um, she went and, and she had to go find the courier and kill the courier. And then, you know, I killed the courier and my sound wasn't working right on in my game. And that really irritated me. Um, so I, I just did a reload, thinking, oh, that'll just, that'll fix it. Um, and it was a really mm. slow reload. And oh, when it, my screen finally came back up, the, the, the respawned courier was delivering <gasps> her death blow. No. Oh, no. Just in time to see a little oh. bit around it go, ah! Son of a... <laughs> Wow. So, nope. another one of my 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 Iron Man rules. That was a little bit ironic, though, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you noticed that all the things in that song um, by Lainus Morissette are just tragic and not necessarily ironic? Yeah, yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah, okay. Anyway, which is ironic, isn't it? It is. That's ironic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so so my new one is not to do any kind of reloads or, or don't pay attention to anything else unless I'm safely in my inn. Back to a little bit ironic. She came back to life. Another no monk. <laughs> and she's actually still alive. I got her up to level 20 Yay. today. Woohoo. And nice. uh, she's resting. And then I I, she's scared out of her wits, and she? <laughs> <laughs> she she went and she got her mount, and she's like, No, I'm not coming out. I'm not coming out anymore. No, I it's just enough. <laughs> Run away! Okay, let's listen to Ren and more game. Yay! Wild boars roasting in Black Rock Spa. Undead missing their own nose. Dancing snowmen running free in front. Disguised as little gnomes Everybody knows Crafting eggnog in a row Help to raise your cooking mind Engineers with new goggles aglow Fix wonder vault machines Tonight, Great Father Winter's on his horse, bringing toys to Ogamar and Iron Forge, 
and every loyalty is gonna cry to see they haven't unlocked how to fly and so I'm typing this in trade chat to trolls from 1 to 92 It's been said many times, many ways, Merry Winter Vale to you. It's been said many times, many ways, Merry Winter Vale to you. Oh my goodness. Yay. Thank you. That was awesome. It's amazing. Duppy, can you read the next email? Have I been invited now? You have. <laughs> well, let's have a look. I have not. I'm not sure it was included in our contract, man. <laughs> Only if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, honestly, I would love to, but I don't have the okay, invitation. Okay, I'll read the next one. Happy for I want to. I just don't have the invitation. So send <laughs> the invitation and I shall. Yeppy got, I mean, a shayo got it. A shayo got it. A shayo got it. It's that favoritism. Sorry. Whoa. Boop, boop. <laughs> happy 400th ep- happy 400th episode what the hell <laughs> in 8th year oh I'm being attacked again oh my gosh I don't want to run back from the graveyard Do you remember what that was from make love not warcraft oh yeah, yeah. Um, hello lovely call ladies just a quick email with my first audio submission I hope it make I hope it makes it all right and sounds okay anyways back to the game we all love so much sincerely Matterhorn oh. P.S. happy holidays nice. to everyone and take care of the new year all right let's listen to Matterhorn hello call ladies this is Matterhorn And I thought there could be no better time than now for my first audio submission. 400 episodes and 8 years of the show are fantastic achievements. I had to just send in an audio to not only congratulate you ladies, but also the past co-hosts that helped you get here. There can be no denying, however, that it's April, April in herself that has kept the show going right back from the old days when she used to do it by herself in the beginning. The show has had many changes over the years, but I would like to again congratulate everyone on such a fine podcast. Now I better get back to my garrisons. My followers won't send themselves on missions. Bye all. Take care. Oh my God, that was just so chocked full of stuff. <laughs> and to think that we're now on episode 653 and that was yeah. 400 <laughs> it's it's so amazing it was good to hear Matt's voice <laughs> and um it was good to hear from everybody uh you know my favorite my real favorite memory will always be when um Rishna got mad at me for killing the bunny rabbits at um <laughs> at the monastery well. Um, how long, how long was he gone for? Hmm? How, how many minutes was he gone for? Well, he logged off he completely. He rage quit. Yeah, he, he logged off, and he wouldn't play with me the rest of the day. 
And he finally came back. But that, that was the whole day, and that was when he decreed that no bunny rabbits. And then it was funny because right, um, remember, where was that? Somewhere in Mulgar, there was some crazy bunny rabbits that you had to kill. And yeah. that, those were the only ones you, you could kill. But anyways, um, it was so good to hear Morgane. Her voice is beautiful. The parodies they did were amazing. Um, and <laughs> yeah. And it was good to hear from Matta. Thank you, Matta. Is he in, is he still in the audience? Um, uh, he I, hasn't been here okay. at all today. Tonight. Okay. Well, well, when you uh, listen to the show, Matta, thank you. Uh, it's always yeah. I always we forget have, that we he. We have fifteen people in the chat room. Oh, hi, chat room. Who do we have? Yeah. Anybody we, we know? Just, we just <laughs> had yeah. had a raid coming in. <laughs> so. Yeah. How wonderful. Um, Robin Hood, Razuri, Namake, Lurks. Lurks is a, a bot, but it, pro, it conveys our stats to everyone who watches Twitch. Oh, nice. Hans Dig, Kenna, JC Gamer, Grand Nagus, Fusion Lit, Aranth, Bellu, Inleka, Electric Longboard. I think that's a bot, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it is. Commander Root is just the uh, chat room itself. Oh, okay. Obi Stars, Jor, Muir, <laughs> uh, Scrubarn, Seal a Dancer, Sector 3601, Sweet Dude, Tuck or Tuckle, mm. V and K, and Vir Gopraz. Well, it's good to hear Thanks from all, all of you for all being of you here. Being here. Especially, hey, Aranth, you know, you're always wonderful. And uh, thank you again, Kyle. That was a nice blast from the past. Tidra, Rogue Slayer, Alita. <laughs> And Asheo, of course, Jeppy. Asheo and Jeppy, yes. Yeah. <laughs> somebody somebody complained about me not having a green screen. I will get on yeah. that guy. Yeah, he we're doing he's doing a lot of stuff, so yeah. We appreciate it. All right. So now's the, now's the time I get to play this. We're clan of darkness here together. What's in an egg that we can't weather? Apocalypse. We've all been there. It's the same old boss. Why should we care? We're a clan of darkness here together. What's in an egg that we can't weather? There's nothing that we can't face. Constructs, how are the clans of darknesses and control off while on Earthen Ring and Wormrest Accord and other places doing? Earthen Ring, Wormrest Accord, and Winter Hoof. Winter have Hoof. No new achievements for leveling this week. Oh, okay. Not, not even one. However, in classic, <laughs> we've had Bernadette level. Seven Alliance Dwarf Paladin and Control Outlaw Guild of Pagel, mm-hmm. who's hit level seven. We had Pocahundras, Gnome Rogue Alliance, and Control Outlaw Guild of Pagel, which is hit level seven. I don't know how to invite in classic. So if somebody could give me a crash court how to invite people in the guild. The same way. Yeah. G, G, you do G oh. Invite. Yeah. G invite. G invite. Yeah. G. yeah, G invite and then. The, the okay, team, I'll make yeah. some more alts and I'll level some more stuff in there because I have a limit of 15 characters per account, apparently. Uh, yeah. So, 15 classic, 15 retail. So I'll make some more. No, characters no, 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 no. Stop. No, full wow. stop. Full stop. <laughs> you have each each version, classic yeah. and retail, each have 50. Yes, 50. that's 100 characters in all. Yes. Oh, so maybe I yeah. should log the back. Only, the only I'm going to make some alts in uh, classic, and I'm going to level all the professions. Yeah, the only difference, uh, the only difference is that in classic, you can only have same so, same uh, faction uh, tools on PvP servers, right? And you can you only have a max characters per server. I think exactly. Just right. like classic was back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, now, if you're wondering where Pagel is, Pagel is in the East U.S. region. 
So uh, if you're in the EU, it won't connect to that. But if you're in U.S. East, which is New York, um, Central Mountain Time, I think, would also apply. Mm. Then you can join us on Pago, and I'll be happy to invite you. All you have to do to join the Guild is send in a submission to Control Out Wild Podcast, which our email address is Control Out Wild. C-T-R-L-A-L-T-W-O-W. So send in a submission. It can be a voice submission, a written submission. We'd be happy to read your submission on the show. And then you qualify to be a uh, dark oracle or whatnot on the uh, guild. Yeah. One of our officers would be happy to invite you. On the board guild, we've had no new levels currently mm. at um, on the Pago. Mm. The my leveling outside the guild, I've leveled on the U.S. West region on Old Blanche. I'm not gilded there. I'm oh. hoping to help my buddy start up a guild because mm. he doesn't like to have a lot of people uh, send him guild invites. Right. So if you're in a guild, you can't get a guild invite. So best way to avoid guild invites is just to join guild. a guild. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I don't know that there's a way to block guild invites in classic. I don't know if that's enabled. I think it is. Yeah, it's probably in the interface to... somewhere. I know yeah. retail has uh, a feature that you can block the guild invites. I don't know if that exists in classic or not. Mm. Um, but on uh, classic, I'm leveling on Old Blanche, a level five human warrior called Deathhurst. Mm. He just learned alchemy, so he's level five. I'm leveling Shakdo because I want a dwarf hunter because I I hear all this stuff about hunters having mana. So I want to know mm-hmm. about having hunter having mana and running out of ammo. <laughs> running out of ammo, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I just know during uh, during uh, the Lich King days, I would sell heavy ammo for a <laughs> fortune because right. that was like the best ammo in the game. Right, yeah. And I've also made Groove a dwarf priest because I hear there's a thing called Fear Ward that only dwarf priests get in classic. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'll have to check it out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he's That's currently fine. leveling up to uh, have enchanting and pillaring. I'm going to try and figure out how to make bags. If you need bags on Blanche, once I know how to make bags, you can have four free bags on any character you want. Uh, awesome. I think it's a cool thing to have eight bags to st- or four or eight bags to start with your alts mm. because then you don't have to always run to the Back. vendor. Yeah. I know I played I played for hours and hours and hours because I had bag space. Right. That makes a Without big... bag space it's just very frustrating to kill a few things, then go back to the vendor. Do I need this? Do I not need this? Should I save it for an alt? I'm multi box so that way I'm able to trade leather, mail and uh cloth to whoever needs it in my party. So, whatever drops, I have a use for it. Uh, mm-hmm. Two-handers, or you have to train for it, cost 10 silver. Mm. I've only managed to have 10 silver in classic once. Oh. Mm. When I got 10 silver, I gave it to Aprilian so she could start to guild. Right. Yeah, I remember so, that. So, like, if you, if you want a challenge, if you're a little uh, bored of uh, everything being handed to you on a silver platter, I highly recommend... Uh, trying your hand at classic and seeing how far you can get. Mm. I just had somebody run next to me on a mount. It looks awesome. <laughs> you don't see a lot of mounts in classic. You see a lot of people on foot. No, yeah. And, uh, that's just the leveling. No All new right. achievements when time flies. Okay. All right. So we're going to be recording next week. Same day, same time, Sunday, yep. 5 p.m. That looks good for everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the memories, Kyle. Shout out to Jeppy and Asheo and Tidra and uh, Lita and Rogue Slayer for the memories. Thank you very much, Chatroom. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alex Mon, for for the raid again. Yeah, that was very nice. Thank you. We enjoyed that. I'm a Prillian for the whore. And I never thought in a million years I'd be saying this. <laughs> this is Constracts for Classic. Oh, okay. <laughs> this has been Grand Nagus. Rule of Acquisition, number 19. Satisfaction is not guaranteed. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, chat room. Bye, chat room. Bye, chat room.
All right. Good show.